Hello everyone, welcome to Chess Cakes and my name is Deepak. In this tutorial, we're going to be quickly looking at how to build the basic building block of Angular 17 application, which is the component. So until now, we have seen how application bootstraps, what are the most important files and folders and how they are structured in the skeleton of your Angular 17 application, which is provided by the Angular CLI. So let's quickly go to the Chrome browser and see the application that we're going to be building along the way. So here on the landing screen, you see a login component. Upon click on the login button, you see that we have reached to the landing page. And then we have three tabs over here, the students and the subjects respectively. Let's just focus on the landing page for now. So it has a component, it has a grid, it has a search input feature, and it has a sidebar. And then it has the other two tabs right so my focus is to basically build this so now as we had seen already that if we need to build this component we can do it always from the scratch by our own however my focus in this application is to use a ui library which is the bootstrap ui library and then create a component accordingly so so for now as we can see where we for now we are just going to be building the home component and will not focus on the login component for now our primary focus is going to be only on the landing page and then when we start talking about routes and forms and that's when we will build other pages and components of this application so now let's see which version of bootstrap is supported and let's quickly see what version of bootstrap is supported by angular 17 let's come here let's click on the get started now as you can see on the dependencies side that the ng bootstrap version 16 is supported by angular 17 in higher version and then the bootstrap css for the same is going to be version 532 and popper is 2.11.8 the idea of using any of these ui library is basically to make your work a little easier the let's say if you need to build your application from the scratch generally in all the production grid application we really need to build First of all, the UI library our own, and then we implement that UI library in different projects. So the UI library in Angular is built by Angular library and Angular elements. If you are interested in knowing Angular elements and Angular library, please do write down in the comment section below and I'll create a separate video for those. For now, let's just focus on the ng bootstrap library. And then as we have seen, the version for this is 16xx which is supported by Angular 17, that the version of Angular that we are using now. So let's quickly go to the getting started page again, home. And let's just copy this. And let's see if we can install it in VS Code. So let's quickly go to the VS Code now. We have a VS Code running here. And then paste this. It'll take a while and it'll install ng bootstrap and we will also check the correct versions are installed by looking at the packet json and packet hyphen lock json file later on let's give it a pause let's just take a while and then until it installs let's just stay here okay now we can see that it has updated packet json files.scss main.ts tsconfig app.json tsconfig dot spec dot json tsconfig now let's quickly see what is installed in the package double click on it we'll see the ng bootstrap installed here 16 is the version that we wanted 532 is the bootstrap version that we wanted to install as you can see that it is highlighted by the green color bar on the towards the left of this of this file and similarly all the other dependencies are installed we are good here now let's quickly see what's 
inserted in these styles.scss. Now you can see here in the styles.scss, you may notice that it is using apparate import bootstrap slash scss slash bootstrap. So um, here is the scss file that's essentially trying to import the bootstrap library in your scss. So here onwards, um, you can consider this as a regular import of JavaScript. However, this import is different from the JavaScript import. But then the idea of SCSS import is that when your final application is built up, the styles.scss will have the initial bootstrap file given in the top of your application. So we can quickly do a check, see if understanding is correct. So right now the dist folder is empty. There's nothing in here. Now it's getting built. Just wait for a while until it builds and let's quickly see what's what comes in styles.scss file. Now we can see the application has already been built. Now quickly go to the dist folder and in the browser folder you can see that the style files has been generated with this name CSS. And now you notice that the style file has all that CSS. Do you know where the CSS comes from? As I said earlier, that the moment you do an import bootstrap dot, the moment you do an import of any of the CSS file given here it will just do copy and paste it when you do a build and in fact through using locally also it will consider this file loaded so that's the use of etherate import imagine that if you did not have that etherate import available here you would have to basically go and copy that entire file over here or probably jiggle with the uh, css files in your index.html in the order in which you want them to be loaded However, with the, uh, the CSS preprocessor, it has become a lot easier like this. And now, uh, now we have added the Angular. We have also seen that it build, it generates it. So we are good here. Now let's quickly go to the app folder. And in the app folder, we'll just open the app component.ts and apphtml.ts. I think we can close the styles file as well. We don't need any of this, right? We can just simply remove this. Primary focus of this application is to build the app that we are building along the way, which is to build the landing page now. Now we have deleted this. And I think the SCSS file is anyway empty. Yeah, it is empty. So there's no need to change over here. The HTML also we have removed. I'll just quickly say, I'll quickly see by starting the application if the application still builds and renders text successfully and then we will start including the ng bootstrap directives and components into our app and the application is being built wait for a moment and then we'll see if it if we have successfully changed all the things correctly and the bootstrap library is added or not. We just load for a moment and then we will go to the browser and have a look at the application. Now it's loaded, so let's go to the Chrome. The application is working very well, no problem with it. Let's see if there are any console errors. As we can see, there is none as such so far. Let's just refresh this app again. Now, our primary focus is basically this landing page as you can see you need to have a sidebar a landing page like this with a grid and a search text box so let's see how that is being built
you can see our application is working properly. And now let's try to change this application the way we want, which is like this. So now we're going to be building a dashboard and a landing page, which looks like this. We're not going to be building the sidebar just now, but just the landing page. So as I said earlier, we are going to be using ng bootstrap for building our UI components for our application. Let's quickly go to the ng bootstrap library. And let's see, since we need a grid and a search text on a landing page like this. So we'll go to the table and let's see which table we need to implement. Let's go to the example. Basically, we need this search and filtering. We're going to need search and filtering as displayed over here on this page. And let's see how they have implemented it. So basically, a form, then a table, and then it's columns, and then we have a for loop inside that for. We are going to be displaying everything else inside it. 